Hello there, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. Today is the last day of the build of the short sterling in 172nd scale from Italeri. You may remember if you've watched the other videos that we left it just before the primary paint job and we've done all the paint, we've done the detailing on the paint, we've done a bit of messing around, we've done all the detailed builds, all the turrets, bombs everything's gone on everything's finished and it's looking grand i have to tell you it's been quite a journey though it's quite a long build so if you haven't done so already do check out the other videos in the series some box opening and two previous days of building if you like them please remember imperial thumbs up on the like button below and if you haven't done so already, why not? Uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, you'll get notification for new videos as they arrive. And of course, if you'd like to offer a bit more concrete support, you can do it through my many partner programs here or indeed through Super Thanks. So let's get on and see how we took the ready to paint short sterling to the final product on the last day of our build of the short sterling in 178 scale from Italeri. Okay, so we'll start off with the first coat of the Dark Earth. And with the BS Dark Earth paint put down, we'll leave that alone, let it dry thoroughly, give it another light coat of this so let that dry thoroughly and then we'll apply some satin varnish and with the relevant bits masked off it's time to put on the coat of dark green when the masks all come off then we have a very lovely disruptive pattern all we have to do now is let this dry really thoroughly, um, add another coat of satin varnish and then mask it off for the black on the underside. So now we've masked off the top surface and we can add the black. Okay then, quick catch up of what's been happening. We have, I, we, I have sprayed the sterling with the um, earth and green upcoats and of course black undersides. I've also made like this warm bronzy colour here for the exhaust collectoring and some pictures of the uh, sterling in action show like a, a, a front ring there. Sometimes it looks the same colour as the collectoring, sometimes it looks like a greyish, darkish greyish, warmish colour. Oh, that's the air ambulance going overhead hope everything's okay um, so yeah this, this is like a warmish color on the front here I've used like a dark gold gray because it, it looks nice then this sort of warm bronzy brassy stuff and all that's going to get knocked down with a bit of weathering as well and I've also painted the um, exhaust which are going to go in here as well um, at the front here this here window the bulge and there's another one there that came out in fact into the model so what I had to do is take off this chin area shake it all about got that piece out put it back in like um, like this like inwards like that and then jiggled it around until it sort of dropped into place splash of extra thin and held it for ages and that's now back in place and it doesn't look too bad so, um, what's next? Um, everything's been covered with satin varnish as well, so that is actually ready for the decals. Decals, transfers, whatever you want to call them. 
I come D calls, so that's the end of that. It's one of the two permitted options. So there. Um, propellers. Uh, they were sprayed first with aluminium, then black. A bit of like chipping and knocking about on there. The, the tips are on. The hubs have been repainted. They're ready to go. There's like a little cover for the hub, um, which I think are black. Those, those have gone later, but they're essentially ready to go. The main wheels, happy with these. Uh, sprayed it all with tyre black first. Then a ring of Dural as well, because I thought steel and aluminium just looked too bright. So I put Dural on there. Then hub, the inner hub is black. Those are all going to get um, a bit of treatment with some weathering washes that I have for wheels. As are the two ginormous undercarriages that have been uh, sprayed black. These um, parts here on the Olio that actually move, they're of course in chrome. It's a couple of um, hinges I've knocked out in chrome as well just to make them look a bit better. Tiny bit of weathering on the front there. Those are going to be um, given some oil and some dust and made to look worn as well before they go on the plane. Oh, and I've got um, 18 bombs, there's six of them, 18 bombs, they're yellow, so they're going to get their green noseband and some print onto them as well before too long, then they can go in the plane at some point. All the other doors and you know the gear doors, bomb bay doors, all of that have all been sprayed on the sprues, tail wheels are ready. Um, I'll get the markings on first and then it's uh, going to be just basically an assembly job and then do some weathering. So let's get on then and put some markings on this lovely sterling. So as normal with these markings Nice dose of microset in the general area. There we get the transfer itself. Get it kind of roughly in the right place. And then we can start moving it around a bit. You know, this one, this main wing one comes right up to the tip like that, and then kind of, does it cover that? That it covers that, okay, so, there we go, if we just bring it over so it hits this line here, and then just covers the circular panel there, and that's in place and just you know go around the the aircraft there really aren't a lot of decals 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 whatever you call transfers to do so i'll crack on with those and i'll come back when i'm ready to a bit more finessing of them one interesting curiosity of this particular um marking scheme is f 403 g now the g means that this aircraft had to be guarded at all times on the ground it had to have an armed guard now i'm thinking that's because of the h2s radar none of the other schemes have the g for guard on there so i guess because this had the highly secret h2s radar fitted this aircraft on the ground had to have an armed guard on it at all times right quick catch up of what we've been painting over the last few hours what we've been up to here are the 18 bombs. They each have a green badge to say they're live. Green ring around the nose rather. And um, an identification as 500 pound bombs. 18 of those. 9,000 pounds. Quite a handy payload. Then the propellers. Um, as you saw I've distressed them slightly. They were painted aluminium then black. Uh, the hubs are painted aluminium, then just distressed the leading edges a bit, added yellow tips. Always paint, remember, all if you're going to do is paint the white first, then yellow on top, because otherwise it won't stand out against the black. The undercarriage legs, I have painted them black. I've 
added a couple of bits of uh, metal work here on the oleos and here on a few hinges. I've get sort of touched up around a bit, bits and pieces, knocked it up a bit. I've then put a, a wash of uh, landing gear wash over it, which just sort of separates out the blacks a little bit. And then a little bit of landing gear dust as well has gone on to make them look used. That's all very nice. And then the main wheels. Um, they were painted tire black on the outside, Durell in the middle, and then black right in the very, very centre. The uh, tire black I've sort of stippled over some, first of all, a light sand and then a dash of white as well to make it look like the surface is worn a bit. And I've also splashed a bit of, uh, which was it? Land shafts and bearings wash. That's it. Just like that sort of greasy look in the middle. So they look quite cool actually. Now if you're going to do this, top tip is when you've got the flat spot here, practice your stippling and, and see what effects are happening on this first because you never see that again because of course it's going to be flat. Then if you're happy with it, just apply it around the whole of the rim of your tyre. So that's all of that done. Let's have a look at the plane. So the plane itself, as you can see, all the decals are on, decals, whatever, transfers, whatever you call them, are on here. I'm not, you know what, I'm not going to apologise for saying decals. It's what I've always said, and it's one of the accepted ways of saying it if you look in the dictionaries. So decals, sorry, but decals. My channel, I can do what I like. Right, so all the decals have gone on. Um, they look really cool. Maybe the red is a little rich on the side numbers. Maybe they were a bit more toned down. I don't know. Um, but they go on really well. They're quite thin, so they mould quite nicely. I have used quite a lot of um, of decal setting solution, and even some um, decal solvent to get them in chased out some of these when they're absolutely dry chased out a couple of these with a very sharp knife so i can seal everything in there now um on the underside everything's black and fine and looks really quite lovely um, i might just give a little bit of a dry brush on these ribs um just to make them stand up but then again i might not the uh, lines here I'm going to in, sort of punch up with uh, this panel lines. I'm going to use like a stone grey for the panel lines on the bottom and on the top probably I think probably a deep grey like this on the top for the upper surfaces. See how we go. So what's left to do? Well, the turrets have to be made and put in. The landing gear has to be put in. The bombs have to be put in, wheels on, propellers on obviously with the prop bosses. Um, the exhausts have to go on. Then the tailplane wheels, the tail wheels go on, all the bomb doors and gear doors can go in. Um, but I'll do that after I've done most of the weathering because I'm going to be handling the plane too much while I'm doing that. <clears throat> then that will be pretty much, as far as I know, it. So probably best part of the day to finish off. But she's looking good. It's absolutely looking great so far. OK, so the exhausts can go on. Now the one on the inside has got this extra little pipey bit at the end so that's the inside exhaust there there we go and the outside engine has a sh slightly shorter exhaust doesn't have a little bit at the end there we go and what we can do then is weather those up with a bit of rust and smoke and stuff and then put some smoke trails over the tops of the wings. Right, I'm going to start putting the bombs in 
now, but there's a problem. You see now, <clears throat> the bomb mounting here is supposed to sit on this middle rib here, whatever form of stringer, uh, spar, whatever you like to call it. But it won't fit because if you put that on the middle, the uh, tail don't fit in. So what you have to do is kind of notch here and here roughly to put it in. So that's on six bombs. Now I don't know how we're going to do with the main bombs. I'll have to have check those out as well. I'll be really pretty upset if I have to notch 18 of these things. I have to notch six at the moment but I'll see how the other 12 go first. There's a similar problem with the main bay. Now on the instructions this rear bomb should be sitting on the third one of these along but it won't fit in there so I'll put it on the fourth. Then I've put them every seven sections and it kind of it fits there it's all right. Um, on the diagram it looks like it actually does snug, snug right up to the front so I'm going to go with that spacing. Um, fourth frame up then every seven frames a new bomb do that for the rest of them well that's as close as I'm going to get it so I'll now put all the bomb doors on and move on to the undercarriage right undercarriage now this is going to be tricky what I need to do here is there's a pin right at the very end here I just need to cut that right near the end on a slant now what that's going to let me do is put this side of the gear in first then that side hopefully will just sort of push up personally looking back on it I would modify the mountings as well but I'll I'll talk about that a bit later on but for the now what we need to do is uh, see if I can refocus for a second no we can't uh, we need to put the side in first and then work that round and then slot downwards okay that's that's the plan right so what I've done um, on the outside of these mountings there's like this flange here and a hole in it and uh, an edge I've just trimmed down that edge so it's flush and also just taken the a little bit out of the rim of the hole there so in theory the gear should just slide through there but still has the hole to sit in once it gets there that's the theory and there it is in all its glory I would love to have um, been able to show you the footage of it actually going in but there are rules on YouTube about what you can say and what you can't say and various other things so it does, does go it took a lot of a lot of persuading for this this side to go in but it got there in the end and do you know what I'm I don't mind because it's a lot lot easier to do this and then paint it and then put the legs in later than put the legs in and then mask them all off because they you know why would you do that unless of course you have to but if you're hand painting it of course then you can probably do all this and just brush around it. Anyway, I'm going to leave those alone. And I'm going to get onto the tail wheels next and then we'll do all the doors. The rear undercarriage slots onto its mounting like this. Okay, it will be a pain, but it will go. Here we go. Gear doors go into slots on the fuselage. They are very long, there's no tabs, but it's not difficult to get them to line up. Now these doors for the underwing bomb bays, there are six of them on each side, and they are actually different lengths, so make sure you get the right part number in the right place. So there they all are. All the bomb bay doors in, all the bombs in, undercarriage on, just need to put the wheels on. And at the back I need to put on the uh, the 
bay doors. I need to put the undercarriage doors on the front. We're getting on, we're getting on, we're moving on nicely. Right, undercarriage doors now. First of all, there's a small door that sort of slots on the back here. A couple of channels for it to sit in. Like that. Then the main gear doors go on. Now they just have two little pins to sit on on the side of the gear leg here and here. Two little pins and they align with two little slots in the door so the alignment is okay. But they will be sitting sort of the the surfaces will be pointing directly at the gear legs so it's kind of like a a 90 degree fit which isn't always the best and isn't always it'd be easy to achieve but there we go that's the sort of thing there See, I can't think of another aircraft ever made, I mean ever made, that's got so much complexity to its undercarriage, um, especially as it has like one wheel on each side. I mean, the A380's got a lot, of, and 747's had a lot, but then they had a lot of wheels and lots of legs. Just like a basic single wheel, single leg arrangement, it has so many bits and pieces. Actually half expect it to be able to sort of kneel down, you know what I mean? It's it's just so complex. Beautifully engineered and I'm sure they went wrong a lot, but um very odd. Very odd. Anyway. It's to get the length in of stroke of undercarriage into such a small space, isn't it really? Right, well, we'll leave those alone then, um, do the tail wheel next. Right, so what we've got to do, we have already put in the wheels you saw earlier. Um, we've got this little bracket here as well, which holds the doors open. Once that bracket is in, we can put in this little fillet between the two wheels. That sort of sits there and a little dash of our favourite extra thin we'll keep that in place a little bit more there we go and now for the gear doors um, tiny blob of glue at the end of that because it's going to be holding on the door hopefully And the gear door goes on its housing and I guess it sits wide open like that. That looks a bit silly. Let me double check. See, it's supposed to sit like about that way. I'm guessing there's something wrong with these. Let's twist them up a bit. So I have a habit of speaking. I've got the, the cap of the glue in my mouth and then I sort of try and say something. It's a terrible habit of mine. Right. Let's see if that looks a bit better this time. That looks a bit better. Still not 100% convinced, but you know what? They look about right, and about right, right at the moment, will be okay. The wheels just clip in to 
the gear legs here and I'll be really careful with these because you don't want to break anything. They kick in, the wheels are better turn. Of course what we're going to do is when we put it on its legs the we'll find the position of the flat spot and then just glue it into place. But for the moment we leave it as it is. Right, so the front tire, right, first thing I'm going to do is put these guns in. And then there's a bracket that goes on either side made of photo etch. Um, those obviously are going to go in with super glue on them. Shall I tell you why I really don't like photo etch? It's because I dropped this part 15 minutes ago and it's taken me all that time to find it. I don't have a carpet so it's not like carpet monsters eating it. I found it on the outside of the hem of my trousers where it had attached itself. So I'm hunting around on the floor and it's on my leg all the time. I don't like photo etch for this very reason. It can just run away with you and ruin your day. I actually was concerned about even finishing this aircraft if I couldn't find that piece of blasted photo etch. It's a bit of metal. That's all it is. It's a tiny little piece of metal. And I was seriously thinking so I, I'm, I don't want to finish this kit if I can't find that bit of bit of metal. Madness. That's what photo etch does to you people. Be careful with it. There should be a support group somewhere. Victims of photo etch. Maybe I'll start one. Anyway, I'm going to leave those alone to properly set up. Then I'll do the rest of the turret. Okay, so what I've done is, this is the photo etch here, on each side. There's a plastic hoop that goes in. The photo etch grips the side of the guns, the gun's gone dismounting. Then I've put the back plate on here. And then what I've done is a, just a very, very gentle um, dry brush, just to bring out some of these edges, because they're going to be really difficult to see inside the... Um, inside the plastic otherwise. Then there's the turret itself, the, the glassware of the turret and that will sit in like this. The whole thing will button up and that's the front turret and you can see the you can see the, the ironwork through the glass which is really nice. I'm happy with that. I'm not happy with the fact that I have to use photo etch but I'm happy that for the moment at least, this one I've conquered and it works and it looks grand. Just the mid upper and the tail turret to do now. One of the things about making all these bits off the aircraft is getting them to fit back in again. So to get the nose turret in, this has got to come off. Um, possibly this sort of locating ring as well. I don't know about that one. Certainly this bottom part's got to come off. If you want the historical accuracy of it, you've got to make it actually in place. Or you've got to chop the front end of the plane around and you don't really want to be doing that. So, that's it really. just got to tidy up the bottom of this and in it will go. And so, there it is, sitting in place. Very nicely too. Right, for the rear gun planet, there's this piece of photo that you have to bend, like this. And then the gun mounts into that the inner guns are slightly lower than the outer guns so it sort of fits into the piece there and there so that the pieces wobble that's when you know you've got the right place there you go and then just put some uh, super glue into that to hold it in place then that assembly goes onto the base cradle here and connects to the two sides there. 
Inside of the turret you have um, that beam there, which was photo etched to support the guns. The guns are also supported on this plinth here. And then there's a, a plastic bar that goes over the back. Obviously that just sits in with polystyrene cement, so that's all jolly good. And on the back of the turret, sorry, on the front of the turret, it's the back of the aircraft, but it's the front of the turret if you think about it. There are these two um, shoots that are also the photo etch, the last pieces of photo etch I'm putting on and those are channels for the uh, spent shell cases to be thrown out. I mean these days they collect all spent shell cases because brass is not cheap. In those days I'd have thought you know brass strategic material bring them back melt them down out they go again job's done but no, apparently they prefer to litter western Germany and the low countries with bits of brass instead. Anyway, so those all get painted up black and then I'll put the turret together. And the last thing to do on this model is put the propellers on. Simple enough. Feels like a, a relatively straightforward thing to finish off a kit that is so detailed and so so much hard work at times, but rewarding, rewarding, great plane. Wow, there we go. Um, quite the build, quite the project. Um, I'm worn out having done it in a week. I will not be doing a build like that in a week ever again, I promise you. That was a lot of work, but it's worth it. I think it's a beautiful kit, so um, yeah, well worth doing. I hope you liked it too. I mean, if you did, then please remember, thumbs up on the button below, otherwise I will never know. And if you haven't done so yet, do please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to be notified of new videos as they arrive. Thank you very much for coming along on this ride so far, and I hope to see you again very soon. Goodbye.